Hey, what's up guys? I just wanted to make this video on the many are called, few are chosen. And I'm doing this video because there's a lot of people who take this scripture out of context, like so many others. And a lot of people like to say that they're chosen or, you know, sometimes people tell other people you're chosen, you know? And the only place in the Bible that shows up is um, chapter 22, verse 14 of Matthew, for many are called, few are chosen. Now, I'm doing this video because the Lord wanted me to clarify this because I even was, I don't want to say deceived, but even I had a altered perception of what this meant. I used to think that some people are just chosen and some aren't. But let me let me actually just show you what the Lord showed me. So in order to understand the scripture, it's important you read what's above it and below it. So when you read this scripture in context, it's talking about Jesus when he gave the parable of how the kingdom of heaven is like a king who made a marriage for his son and then invited a bunch of people and some people made light of the invitation and didn't go. And then, you know, the servants went out and invited everybody, the good and bad, and, you know, stuff like that. So, bust out your Bible. Let's, let's read this together. Let's read this together, okay? So, open up to Matthew chapter 22. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. But, pause the video, get your Bible. I want you to read along with this so that we can understand this together. So that this might help other people. So, Matthew chapter 22 verse 2 I'm gonna start at verse 2 so I'm just gonna read it all the way through to verse 14 and then I'll just talk about it so the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and they went their ways to his farm, another to his merchandise. And, they, and the remnant took his servants and, and treated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their cities. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highway and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Now, you need to understand, this is what the Lord revealed to me. It is not those that are called who are chosen. It's those who respond to the calling. Understand, everyone is invited. Now, when we go through this parable and understand and try to interpret what it's saying, when it says in verse 4, and, and sent forth his servants, servants are, you can look at them as evangelists, ministers, preachers, you know, and call them that were invited to the wedding okay other scriptures calls um you know the bride of christ okay and um so a lot of people like to think the bride of christ is you know jerusalem or the jews and stuff like that i don't think that i think the bride of christ is those that are true christians that gave up their sin and gave their whole life to serving Jesus Christ and do the will of God for their life. That's who I think is the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is those who gave their lives to Jesus. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Because you need to understand that a marriage, they both want to marry each other, okay? They say, I do, I do, okay? True Christians do want to give their life to Jesus Christ. And Jesus gave his life for us already. 
okay? So it's just a matter of us responding to the calling, okay? It's us responding to the calling. Like I said, guys, it's not those that are called who are chosen. It's those who respond to the calling. So, like I said, evangelists, preachers, ministers, again, sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are invited. You know, I have the feast ready. Everything's prepared. The kingdom of heaven is ready. The mansions are ready. The streets of gold are prepared. The food, the feast, the oxen, the fatlings, the saying are ready. And he's saying, come unto the wedding unto the marriage or rather and they made light of it now you see this in the world when you try to tell somebody about the urgency of of the importance of repenting of your sins accepting jesus telling somebody about what jesus is offering them eternal life people make light of it how can you make light of eternal life that's something i don't get but people do it they make light of the gospel they go back to their sin to their farms to their merchandise to their own will you see what the scripture is saying now you go down a little further um, but when the king heard thereof he was all oh, talking about how servants were killed and entreated them spitefully spitefully and slew them because you got Christians getting beheaded I mean this is going on right now people are being killed for the gospel because they're trying to invite people to the eternal kingdom of heaven and then God was wroth and um, you know, wiped out the cities. And then said he to the servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were invited were not worthy. Because some people went and continued into their sins. Some people were not worthy to enter because they held on to sin. They didn't fully repent. Like professed, professed lukewarm Christians were not worthy. And it says, um, As many as ye shall find... And then he says, Go ye therefore, and, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good. Now they're just going to get anybody. Like we are now trying to preach to anybody. We're trying to get the truth to anybody who's willing to hear it, you see? And then it goes and says, And when the king... Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment... Now, this one is up for interpretation as well. I think, personally, what this means is that somebody tried to get in up on their own merit, on their own righteousness, on their own works. And it's and then when the ser oh, king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness, for there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I believe that's insinuating that you will not enter on your own merit, on your own righteousness, on your own works. And he's saying he was casted out. He was casted out. Now, of course, nobody's going to sneak into heaven, but it's just an example. Like I said, it was just an example. And then it says, for many are called, but few are chosen. Now you need to understand everyone is called. Everyone is called. Now, you also need to understand, let's jump over to um hold on oh let's jump over to romans chapter 8 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to him to them who are the called according to his purpose for whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son so what it is saying is god god is all knowing he knows who's going to be saved and who's not. A lot of people have a problem with that and be like, oh, well, then why would God allow people to go to hell? God does not send people to hell. I don't know how many times I've said this, but people send themselves to hell out of their own selfishness because they chose to hold on to sin rather to repent and turn from their sin and obey the word of God and to pursue and fulfill God's will for their life, you know? People go to hell because they loved not the truth. They didn't want to obey God. Why would God allow somebody into his kingdom of heaven who didn't want to listen to the word he gave us? You see? So, like he's saying, God knows who's going to be saved and who's not. But like I said, everyone gets the chance. Everyone gets invited. Okay? Everyone gets invited. The scriptures say Jesus won't return until every 
single person has heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're told to go and preach to every creature. So everyone gets invited, but those who are chosen are the ones who responded to the calling. If you responded to the gospel, if you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you are chosen, you were chosen, but by no means should you be prideful. By no means you should go around saying, I'm chosen. You should not tell this to anybody. You should not. This is not something that you need to be prideful and boastful of. This is not something that needs to be spoken of in that manner. You understand? Because in a sense, yes, you were chosen. You were chosen because you accepted the calling. You responded. Good. And that's the whole point. But by no means should you have pride. Because yes, many are called. Everybody is called, guys. And it says, Go ye therefore, and as many as ye shall find, invite. Send, f And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden, invited to the wedding. Some would not come. Some did, as you can see in the parable. You just need to read it in context. Interpret it properly. If you have a problem interpreting, it's just keep reading it, keep reading it, praying, asking for revelation, praying and praying. I mean, you know, if, if you interpret it a different way, please let me know what your interpretation, interpretation of it was. But that's how I got it. That's what I came to understand it means, okay? Because people like to say, I'm chosen, and think they're chosen, but you can think yourself into being chosen and then continue in sin thinking you're still going to be saved because you're chosen. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. You need to obey the gospel, repent of your sins, turn from your wickedness, deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus and do as he commanded and obey the word of God. That's what it takes. It's not about being chosen at that point. It's about being obedient. See? People trick themselves into thinking they're going to be saved because they think they're chosen. Oh, another scripture. Let me jump to another scripture. Actually, I don't think I marked it, but God is not a respecter of persons, guys. God is not a respecter of persons. And, yeah, I don't think I marked that one, unfortunately. Oh, I think I did. Yeah, I did. Romans chapter 2 verse 11 there is no respecter of persons with God if somebody is saying they're chosen and they're high and mighty about it that's false pride and they're insinuating that God had favoritism on him or her or that person that's not how it works God is not a respecter of person God does not show favoritism he does not love some person more than another just because you know one is obedient in line with God's will and then another is a will, wicked filthy sinner God loves them equally they're both his creation he wants them both to inherit the kingdom of God see you need to understand God is not a respecter of persons so when you say you're chosen you're insinuating that God has chosen favor on you when that's not true you're showing you have pride which is not something God likes and you need to understand these things. People like to take a scripture and then, you know, take it out of context and, oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm chosen. You know, I'm, I'm drinking beer and playing beer pong right now, but I'm chosen. You know, let me just finish my 40. <laughs> That's not how it works, man. It's not. You need to put the drinks down. You need to put the smoke down. You need to put the drugs that the sin down. You need to put the sin down, your flesh down. Put your flesh down. Okay? It's not about being chosen. It's about being obedient to the one who died for you. That's what it comes down to. Let me just share with what another thing that Jesus said. In John chapter twenty or chapter ten, verse twenty seven, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Are you a part of Jesus' sheep? Are you a part of the flock? Because Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them. He says, I know them. Of course, Jesus knows who's going to be his and who wasn't. Jesus knew who his disciples were going to be. Jesus knew who was going to betray him. Jesus knows his sheep. We hear his voice and we follow him. Okay, don't worry about being chosen. Because if you were called and you responded to the calling, then good, you're saved. Then obey the word of God and endure unto the end. 
and work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Stop trying to deceive yourself with saying you're, you're chosen. I used to worry about, oh, well, am I chosen? I, I want to be chosen. No, it's not about being chosen. It's about being saved and doing the will of God. For he who does the will of God abideth forever. So that's it, guys. That's it. I just wanted to settle that debate and let people know they're taking this out of context. We need to, to get these false imaginations out of our mind. We need to get them out of our mind and we need to just be obedient. We need to be followers of Jesus Christ. Stop trying to exalt yourself with saying you're chosen. Get that thought out of your mind. For many are called, but few are chosen. Okay? God chooses who's invited, who, who, who actually enters the wedding, the kingdom. But that's it, guys. Hope that video helps. If you have any questions or, you know, different interpretations, please comment, contact me. Any questions are welcome. So, like I said, hope that helps, guys. Be blessed in Jesus' name, and I'll talk to you next time.